Hello, humans. I'm Lincoln Lin, a mentor who's trying to become an artist. And this week, I had a pretty serious case of an art block.、Um, at least early this week. I think I'm out of it now, but it took a while. When the art block happened, it honestly was quite debilitating. I didn't feel like I can draw anything. My head was hazy. I couldn't do anything, and I looked online for some ideas on how to combat it. And what I will be drawing in this video is just what I eventually did to combat the art block. And I kind of just want to talk about that now. As the title would suggest, the art that I eventually did make to combat art block. Was a fan art of One Piece characters, and one of them is kind of a spoiler. So if you haven't read until late game in Wano arc and care about being spoiled on certain aspects of one of the character reveals, maybe don't watch this video. Other than that. I hope you enjoy. Now, for what I understand about art blocks and creative burnout from listening to people online, is that it usually stems from well a variety of sources, but just sort of a exhaustion with what you are creating and. For me, that specifically, or most commonly, is because I just don't like the last thing that I do. And in this particular case, what really did it for me was probably the crocodile dragon that I drew in the last video. I, like I said in that video, I don't hate the drawing. I actually still quite like my design of that dragon, considering the fact that I was working off the premise that it's a crocodile turned into a dragon. But when I finish that drawing, and by finish I mean finish rendering that drawing and try to put it on a Yu-Gi-Oh card, it was just. It really felt like I ruined something that initially worked okay. And that kind of just fucked me up. Like, it fucked me up to the point that I just like started wondering, like, why am I even doing this? And like, how am I still like making such bad decisions with rendering and coloring after like years of posting my art online? And. I know to a certain degree that my mind is is making everything worse, and honestly, a lot of it wasn't that bad. And、um, but like some of it really was that bad. But it's one of those things where like I know I shouldn't feel as bad, but at the same time, it's not something I can control. And. In these kind of cases, I feel like, based on my personal experience of dealing with it, one of the best ways to deal with it for me is just to turn around and create something that wouldn't give me such pressure. Because I, obviously, one of the things that really fucked me up last time is the fact that I'm drawing a very unfamiliar subject matter. I'm drawing a dragon. As a person who rarely draws anything that's not a human being or a human noid creature, that's very difficult for me. So I just needed to find my comfort place, the comfortable place, and that's what a lot of the articles and videos I watch online suggest as well. Aside from just you know taking a break off art, which.、Um, I often feel like I can't do, like I know I can do, but like I try to 
not do for my own personal reasons that may not make sense to you. But、um, in terms of comfort art, that's also like one of the problems for me. Where like I don't actually know what's comfortable for.、Me. Like I guess the most comfortable is just like minimum rendering, like、uh, just multiply layer with a red color over like somebody's face, that kind of rendering. And yeah, that works for me. But like, at the same time, I find that if I truly want to get out of the slump, I need to do something that actually makes me feel good, and that usually means going beyond the bare minimum for me. And I am not the most well-equipped person to drawing portraits, like. Especially digitally, I'm honestly my track record is quite mixed, and every time I start on a portrait, I get this wave of feeling like I just don't know what to do, and I there is always like a chance in my head that this is also gonna turn out horribly, which I don't think this the portraits I did for this video any of them turned out. Bad per se,、um, but again, it's just one of those things. Like it's difficult to control, and to a certain extent, even though I'm trying to、um, find my comfort comfort place, I still felt the need that I re- I should also try to like do something that I don't do too often. Cause if I just do what like I did say when I made web comics, I know like the next day I will be back to hating it. Cause like, or like even just minutes later after creating it, I will be like, this is lacking in something. Cause when you get in one of those moods, it's kind of hard to like control how you feel about anything. And. But one thing I did know, like, is definitely my comfort place is definitely to, you know, turn off my brain when it comes to character design and just do fan art. And、um, a lot of the articles of like what to draw when you don't don't know what to draw or like what to draw when you are trying to fight art block do like suggest like just drawing like anime characters or whatnot. So that's what I did. I had some choices as to what I usually draw for fan art, what series I usually do fan art for.、Uh, Senseiya is one of them. Shimogami Tensei is one of them. But ultimately, I felt like I needed to find the right things, the thing that just struck the right balance for me. And the thing about me was like something like Senseiya, which is like a very imp- important and、uh, held in high regard anime for me growing up. Is that I often don't want to finish the drawing I started when I'm drawing Senseiya characters. Like sometimes I just give up on rendering the drawing and. It, it to a certain degree, it's probably because the designs, especially the armor, are like already very complicated and somewhat out of my comfort zone. So I didn't think that would be helpful in my art block. So I and Shin Megami Tensei kind of for a similar reason.、Um, It's not like it's not like I don't know how to draw, say, Naho Bino's armor or Demi Fin's tattoos. It's more the labored process of it might do me more bad than good. So I needed to choo- choose a series to that is struck the right balance of being just complex enough. But also like not too complex for me to like 
really get out of this mental state and One Piece is that series. It has a lot of complicated designs but at the same time especially like as you can see I don't draw people when I'm trying to reach a comfort zone I don't draw anything below the chest and that usually makes it a lot easier especially with One Piece designs and yeah that's how I decided on how I will combat this and I think for me like another thing like to that can help me like get out of a art block like and this is like specific pertaining to when I have art block because of I'm not feeling the art I've been creating recently I just not been in a good art mood is that I get references that make me feel safe like like a sort of um, safety net when it comes to drawing like if I have a good reference photo prepared I am more like receptive of trying to draw something because it is a lot easier to you know add a little you know your creative spin on something that is already mostly pre-made for you or not even pre-made for you just like something that's like you can receive directions on by examining another photo or whatnot something that doesn't like require too much brain capacity and therefore can be like more relaxing experience in the sense that like I if I'm not overthinking it if I just let myself turn off my brain a little I can also turn my brain off of the things that like stress me out and at the, uh, that's not to say like any of these portraits I draw is just like totally a cakewalk for me. They are not like I am trying to do stuff that I don't usually do. Like I am not the most comfortable with drawing fire. I am not the greatest at um, painting lips or skin tones really or hair. But you know. It's about finding that right balance because I don't think like doing something completely like just uninteresting but and simple would like help me get out of this mind state and that's why I needed like some degree of like oh I'm doing this thing that I don't do commonly I'm still like trying to figure something out I'm just not trying to figure out like say how to turn a crocodile into a dragon but that's basically the gist of it. I feel like for anybody out there who's combating creative burnout, it really, at the end of the day, is just trying to find a way to unload yourself. And like for me, I believe that it is the best for me to unload by creating something else, trying to find like the joy of whatever I'm creating again. But I know that a lot of people, for a lot of people, it's different. Like for someone else, it might be like completely like dissociating with what's like you're burning out on. But ultimately, I think each person, we're all different in that way, and each case is different. That we need to find out what works for ourselves case by case, rather than just have a hard and fast rule of what to do. And I hope like every creative could do that because like as someone who again has like burnout and art blocks so often it's never fun and like as a worst of it I sometimes don't like even put a pen to paper like don't sketch anything for like an entire month for like an entire season because sometimes um, my like 
situation just gets so bad that I, it's a moment I, one line goes out of place and every line goes out of place. That's how drawing is. But like, one line goes out of place, I just want to slam everything against the wall and then my rational brain has to come in and be like, that iPad you're drawing on is expensive. Don't throw it against the wall. But yeah, and obviously at the end of the day, I I couldn't just completely like relax and unplug myself. I still had to like do three portraits rather than just one. I still needed to challenge myself in some way. But like that's what works for me, and I sincerely hope like everybody finds what works for them. Okay, that's the end of another video. Thank you guys for watching. As per usual, if you liked the video, please give it a like or a comment. And if you liked any of the art that I made in this video, I've linked my Instagram and Tumblr down below where I post all my art. And if you hated my art in this video, thank you for watching this far. And I hope I at least showed you what not to do in your own art. All right, bye bye.